and Shalom Aleichem, everybody. You are about to watch a video from Yid Aleph Nissen Tavshin Mem Aleph. When anybody mentions Tavshin Mem Aleph, very powerful and vivid memories appear from that special year. Just the word Tavshin Mem Aleph by the Rebbe was something very, very special. First of all, Mem Aleph was a Shnas Hakel. And Shnas Hakel was taken by the Rebbe very seriously, as one could imagine by the Melech, who is responsible for being Ma'er, all the Eden, uh, for Shnas Hakel. And the Rebbe made the whole year into Hakel. And it seems that the Rebbe was a fabrenging more often, longer fabrengings on Shabbos and weekday. And there was a lot of shtudim. The whole year was like packed with all kinds of wonderful, amazing things. To begin, um, on Simchas Torah of Tavshin Mem Aleph, the Rebbe went to Hakafas, to his own Hakafa, the first and seventh Hakafa, on both nights, and by day, of course, by himself, not with the Rashag for the first time, because the Rashag was, had, had had a stroke then. And therefore, the Rebbe was able to fabreng by Hakafas with the Eilam in a very different way than it was until then. And another thing that happened then by Sunchas which didn't happen any other year, was that the Rebbe went out to a fifth Hakafa, to, to the fifth Hakafa, also to the Chest in the middle of the Shul, to dance for Hakafas with the children, which uh, was unprecedented. So the Rebbe went out to three Hakafas on both nights, and then by day, the Rebbe was dancing, but basically by himself with the Sefer Torah. It was very, very special, Simchas Torah. And then by Hemshech Tenat with the kids, um, a couple of days after Simchas Torah, the Rebbe established Tzivus Hashem, and then We Want Mashiach Now became a song that the Rebbe sang basically, or asked to sing every single Fabreng in that year. Kimat. And so there was a big shturim about children, which had begun really six months before in Tavshin Mem. And then there was a big shturim about We Want Mashiach Now, Mashiach and the children. And then a big shturim of coming to see the Rebbe by Shnas Hakel. So it, the whole year was ringing. It was happening. It was an Iber year, so there was Shnasa Iber, so there was a, a longer, a longer year, and some pretty unusual Yaitzed uh, Daven type of type of situations. For example, Erev Pesach was on Shabbos, which means Purim was on Friday. Um, so there was somewhat differences. Rabbi said, "I'm on Purim after Mincha upstairs in the shul." There were some unusual, beautiful giluyim from the Rebbe that did not quite happen, um, that, certainly not that often. So we can imagine that Yud Aleph Nissen, the Rebbe's birthday for Tash and Mem Aleph, was going to be a, a special Yud Aleph Nissen, and the Rebbe didn't disappoint. Well, first of all, a week before Yud Aleph Nissen, exactly one week on Dalit Nissen, was Birka Sachama. As everybody knows, Birka Sachama happens only once every 28 years. So the previous time of Birka Sachama was in Tavshin Yud Gimel. And Lubavitch was quite different by, by Tavshin Memalov. And Birka Sachama was with the Gresta Shturim. The Rebbe's face was lit up, and the Rebbe came out to, uh, to, to, to uh, walk, stand on a bima. In, on Eastern Parkway outside, and the Alta Rebbe's Nigan was the first thing the Rebbe asked to do at Pekas Can you imagine the, the, the hisodinus, the hisrakshas, the feelings that were going through people? And the whole sikhas came after that. There was a hisremimus, there was this elevation, elevated feeling. Within this special year, there was this special moment, Pekas Achama with the Rebbe, that was really very powerful. And the Rebbe spoke about Birka Sachama again at the Fabrengen of Yid Aleph Nissen. The Rebbe spoke about it on the Shabbos before Birka Sachama. Shabbos Tazriya, the Rebbe said a whole sicha, very long sicha, 
about how the Loshon of Bikr Sakhama should be. Until that point, he didn't quite know what to say. There was no Sidurim, and it's not in the Siddur. And the Rebbe made a Seder in Tavshin Mem Aleph and asked to have it printed in a Kavitz, which we used when we had Bikr Sakhama 11 years ago. And after Mincha and Shabbos Tazria, the Rebbe said another Sikha standing by his stender uh, in connection and in addition to what the Rebbe had said before at the Fabrengen. So it was like this unbelievable atmosphere of specialty, and every day there could have been something more special. Into that comes Yidalaf Nissen. The Fabrengens of Yidalaf Nissen, another amazing thing, were three Fabrengens in a row. Yidalaf Nissen, as I mentioned, was Wednesday. So there was a Fabrengen on Tuesday night, there was a Fabrengen on Wednesday night, and another Fabrengen on Thursday night. Now you can ask, what's the big deal? Well, Thursday night was Bedikas Chomets night. The only time that Rebbe Fabreng on Bedikas Chomets night. And the Fabreng wasn't a short one. It wasn't a long one, but it wasn't that short. In other words, Rebbe Fabreng. A mimer and, and, and three or four sikhs. About Tzemach Tzedek. And about Behemshech to the Fabreng of Yilal of Nissen on the Tuesday night Fabreng. You know, uh, B'dikas Chomets was Thursday night because you can't do B'dikas Chomets on Friday night, obviously, which was Erev Pesach, so it was Muktam. Taka wasn't the real B'dikas Chomets on the actual night. In other words, by the next day, it wasn't yet Pesach. Next night wasn't Pesach yet. Still, B'dikas Chomets night was a very unusual night to have a Fabrengen. Anyway, so these were three Fabrengens that came one after the next, one day after the next. So what happened at the Fabrengen of and you're going to be watching it now. And this is what you should look out for. In an unbelievable, unprecedented way, the Rebbe spoke about the President of the United States in three straight sikhs. The second, third, and fourth sikha. It was so unusual that in the fourth time, the fourth sikha, the Rebbe said, like, like he was sort of forenfering or apologizing even, that he is speaking about these in Yonim and not about Divrei Torah because it says that you should be mispalil uh, for, for, for the place that you live, for the, um, uh, for, for the location in which we live. It says in Vicky Abbas, it's a Pasuk. Dirshu l'shleim ha'ir. And so that's why the Rebbe is speaking about this. Now, President, this was President Reagan, and President Reagan was elected at the end of 1980. And so this was just a few months into his presidency, 1981, that he was, there was an assassination attempt. And the president was in the hospital on Yilalf Nissen, and the Rebbe spoke about the first sikha about, about Reagan being in the, in the hospital and about the murderer who tried to murder him and that the murderer was not somebody who came from a low-income type of place where you can say, you can give excuses. And therefore, the Rebbe said that the only real reason is because the people, the children, are not educated with the fact that Ayin Reyev Ayin Shamas, that there is an eye that sees and an ear that hears. In other words, that there needs to be education, needs to happen in the schools, which will allow the children to realize and recognize that there is a Baile Elam, that there is a creator, and that we are responsible to that creator. And this is the theme that the Rebbe spoke about three sikhs on Yeralf Nisan Tavshim Memalov. And then, in the next sikh after that, the Rebbe said that, that he, he talked about the Mifzoim, and then the Rebbe said there's a new Hatso, a new. A new, um, w a new thing that the Rebbe wants to um, introduce, but first he's going to say a mimer, and then after that, so you imagine everybody was sort of on spilkers, what's the Rebbe going to come up with now? And then the Rebbe said the mimer, ki yisholcha bincha, and then the Rebbe said about the Sefer Torah for the children, Sivas Hashem. That was the mifsa that the Rebbe started then, that all the children should be united in this Mifzah. And in the next Fabrengen on Yudalf Nissen by night, that means Wednesday night, 
the Rebbe began the Fabregen by saying that he wants to give the news that the Sefer Torah was already begun in the Ihar Tika, in the old city in Jerusalem, Bein HaChemis, the Rebbe called it, and that he wants the Sefer Torah to remain there. And it started in the Tzamech Tzedek Shul, and the Rebbe spoke about it, but the whole Fabregen was about that, except for the Maimah. And the Rebbe was saying that he wants that every kid should be mishtatif with one dollar that should belong to them. And the Rebbe said he wants the children to write, if they are capable, to write down their names and their mother's names about it. And the Rebbe described how a child who takes the pencil in the hand very carefully and puts it and places it in the hand and sticks out his tongue. The Rebbe said that. Um, I'm not sure if the Rebbe said that on Tuesday night at the Farang that you're going to watch. I think he did. Or maybe on Wednesday night. Because Wednesday night was filled with instructions all about the Sefer Torah. That the Sefer Torah should not be given. That the letter that each person gets, they should get a certificate. The Rebbe described what the certificate should look like. Should have, it should have the uh, Ovis on it. And it should have Chevron. Or it should have the Kaisel and, and different size of the thing. And the Rebbe was describing what the certificate should look like. And that on the certificate it should have the parsha, but not the place, not the exact letter that where the letter was written, because there's some parts in the Torah that are not necessarily uh, very happy, and that a kid shouldn't feel that they were chosen for that was uh, not necessarily a a good or whatever. I can't remember the word, the exact expression that I've ever used, but there are parts in the Torah where a kid may not be uh, so excited that he has a letter dafka there. So the Rebbe said, just to close, close the Kaparsha. And this, this is what the Rebbe started then. The Sefer Torah, three days before Pesach, in honor of the Rebbe's birthday, in Shnas Hakel, right after Bech HaSacham. One point I, I mentioned before, that the Rebbe continued the discussion of Bech HaSacham, was in the fourth Sicha of that Fabreng, the third Sicha in a row, that the Rebbe spoke about the United States and the President and so on. And the, one of the things that Rebbe said was that the lesson from Bikas HaChama is how the Chama, the sun, is a very important element. And we don't just follow the moon, but we need to also follow the sun. And we make a bracha on the sun when it comes back to its original place. And the Rebbe said that one of the lessons is to learn how to utilize the strength of the sun. And the Rebbe said that we are dependent on countries that are not Lavdafka established countries, proper countries, for oil, for gasoline. And the Rebbe said it's Kedai, that one of the lessons and messages of Bikas HaChama is to go away from the countries that are, do not behave themselves like a proper country and utilize the power of the sun. And the Rebbe mentioned then in the south part of the United States, which is where I live, by the way, now. In the south, there is a much stronger um, uh, sun, and it gets very hot. In Florida, and Vichulu, it gets very hot. And we should learn how to utilize the, the gifts that the Abishta gave into the world and to use them uh, for, for, uh, for good things. In other words, take the energy that comes from the sun, because it's available, it's there anyway. And it should be harnessed and used. That's just one of the uh, things that the Rebbe said in the fourth sicha over there. Anyway, this Sefer Torah thing really, really was very important to the Rebbe. And it was, it was often that the Rebbe Fabreng three times if he wanted to, to push something through very strongly. And this was obviously one of them. Sefer Torah for the children. He wanted it to be finished on Rosh Chodesh Ir, the Rebbe Fabreng, and on a, a weekday, and the Rebbe said then that he wants the Sefer Torah to be finished before the end of Hakel, before the end of the year. And this was Nisan, the end of Nisan. And you only had five months to go, Iyar Sivan, Thomas, Av, and El. And so they decided to make the Siyam and Chaf Av, which was obviously a very important day to the Rebbe, on the Rebbe's father's yard site. And the Rebbe said then on Rosh Chodesh Iyar to take, to hire another Sefer. So two, two Safrim should be writing this title so you can finish it early, finish it in time. And I know that the Sefer, Harav Shlema Aaron Hennig, who I know personally from Yerushalayim, 
So Lahobna Rafu Shlema Shlema Aram and Sarachana, he was working day and night. I happened to have been learning then in Yerushalayim, and I remember the incredible um, focus. I once went to see him, and you had to see him behind a door because he did not want anybody coming in. As long as it was day, he was writing and writing and writing for the Sefer Torah. And because the Rebbe pushed this so strong, another very special, special time of Tavshin Mem Aleph. And finally, the Tavshin Mem Aleph Fabrengen was the Rebbe's 79th birthday. It was the year before Shnas Hashemayim. And the Rebbe was going into 80, which was Gevuras. And the Rebbe mentioned that at Fabrengen as well, I believe in the first Sikha maybe. And this was real Gevura, meaning in strength, the energy and the strength of this Fabrengen was very, very potent and powerful. I have not listened to this Fabrengen since Tavshin Memalov, since it happened. And I can still remember all of these Pratim vividly because it, it was so powerful. It was such an impression. That was just a small slice, but a very prominent and important slice, the Alf Nissen Rebbe's birthday of Tavshin Memalov. At the end of that week on Shabbos, Erev Pesach, Rebbe Fabrengen again. And you couldn't, you can't drink wine. Rebbe said in the second sikh of that Shabbos, Rebbe said, if you're allowed to drink wine because you need to drink wine at night for the Seder. And so at the, on the Rebbe's table, there were, and you can't eat chametz, and you can't eat matzah. And so on the Rebbe's table, there were bananas, and in the Rebbe's becha, there was water. The Rebbe said, Lachayim on water, and the Rebbe ate a banana, and then the Rebbe said, again, after the first sikha, the Rebbe said, there was a lot of people over here, and this, it's, what's the point of one person sitting here eating and <laughs> nobody else? But on the other hand, if you try to give what I have in front of me, the whole oilum here, uh, there won't even be a pitter, won't even be a crumb left. So the Rebbe said that he was, wants to give the peters, the Rebbe called it, to the rov, Rebbe Zalman Shimon who was called up by the Rebbe, and that he should have it on behalf of everybody else. So the Rebbe gave him a few bananas, and by the time Rebbe Zalman Shimon sat down, which he was sitting right in front of the Rebbe, right beneath, on the, in, the, in the benches down, he would sit right, right near Rebbe Yael. I think by the time he sat down, there was not a, a zecher of those bananas. Anyway, that's a, another interesting thing that happened. The only time Rebbe Fabreng on Shabbos Erev Pesach, which doesn't happen that often. By the way, it will happen next year. Be'ezrat Hashem, together with the Rebbe, uh, who will be long back before Yeralf Nissen this year. And uh, we will be able to go together with the Rebbe. It should be taken from Yad Mamish.